In this overcrowded classroom in Dar es Salaam, East Africa's young generation is learning how to read and write. But one student is finding it much harder than his classmates. 14-year-old Ali was born with albinism. He has no pigment to protect his skin or eyes from the sun, and so his sight is poor and daylight a constant danger. But his father can't afford the protection that he needs. Sunscreen alone can cost $15 a bottle here, a small fortune for this poverty-stricken family. Saidi Ali knows what lies in store for his child and the other members of his family. He's been blinded by the sun and now has severe skin cancer. He once eked out a living on the streets of the capital, but he lost his business when he lost his sight. Ali is a man of faith, but is deeply worried for his family. Mumbi Nagugi has been more fortunate. She stayed healthy and risen from life in the villages to become a lawyer in neighboring Kenya's high court. But life has still not been easy. She's had to fight incredible discrimination at every step. Nugugi shows me her Swahili dictionary, the most common edition in East Africa. It reads, an albino, thought by some to be substituted for the proper children by evil spirits. I'm an African, but I have encountered the greatest social, if you like, discrimination from my brothers, you know, my brothers, the Africans. Africans have always been discriminated against on the basis of their skin color. For me, it's always been like, shouldn't it be easier for you to understand how unfair it is to, to, to judge somebody on the basis of their color, or in, their, in our case, the lack of color? <laughs> Shaima Kwagir was appointed as Tanzania's first albino member of parliament last year because centuries of discrimination against people with albinism had turned to outright murder. Many here believe that albinos are evil spirits and their bodies have mystical power. They're now being murdered by those who want to harness the magic in their bones. Um, the trail of murder begins here in the hills bordering Kenya and Tanzania. Villages here are remote and belief in traditional magic still strong. Witch doctors have been selling potions made of albino bones and hair. These potions are meant to bring instant luck and wealth to anyone willing to pay the price. 
These are the Bahati sisters, who live in the village outside of the town of Sangarama. Of four sisters, three were born with albinism. When I first met them, nothing seemed untoward, but they are dealing with a terrible tragedy, something that no amount of tenderness from their aunt and uncle can dispel. Three nights earlier, their 14-year-old sister Eunice was brutally attacked and killed. Eunice's sister, nine-year-old Leticia, couldn't hide. She saw everything. This is the crime scene and the murder weapon. Just two days later, there was another shocking development. Incredibly, Eunice's parents were arrested for aiding the killers in exchange for a cut of the profits from one of her limbs. The arrests left the surviving girls defenseless. There have now been 45 murders of people with albinism in Tanzania. There have been hundreds of related arrests but there has not been a single conviction. I was allowed to meet with Eunice Bahati's parents, who are being held in police custody, accused of her murder, but I wasn't allowed to record the interview. They too claim that they're innocent. The police say they're doing their best to end the killings. And in some cases, witch doctors have been run out of the villages. Though I found this witch doctor's hut not far from where Yunus Bahati was killed. Inside, Masai Luma Lula claims that his magic has protected him by rendering his hut invisible to his enemies. <laughs> He knows the secrets of what he firmly believes is albino magic, though he won't say if he's ever put that knowledge to use. <laughs> Masai refuses to believe that his fellow craftsmen are behind the murders. When I visited the lady, I'm the new Kuma. She got a new sheet again. 
Despite these denials, the influence of the witch doctors remains strong. No one in this family would doubt their influence. Saidi Ali is just one of the many people with albinism who believe there is magic somehow locked in their bodies. Uh, Mumbi Nagugi, the high court lawyer, believes that this is a perversion of traditional magic. With a single albino bone selling for thousands of US dollars, she says it's all just a deadly con game. For me, it's like an unholy marriage between capitalism, where you want to get very rich, and tradition. So you take, you borrow from your traditions and your cultural beliefs, you mix it up with the, the greed to get rich, to get powerful, and, and then you, you basically have an unholy mess. Fishermen have been accused of being some of the biggest users of albino magic. Fishing requires both investment and luck, the very things that this magic is supposed to provide. Some fishermen believe that by weaving the hair of an albino into their nets, or by using potions made of ground albino bones, that they'll become luckier in their catch and grow rich by pulling in full nets of fish each morning. It all amounts to a murderous get-rich-quick scheme. In the lakeside town of Mwanza, Ibrahim Chacha is one of the most successful fishermen. So there are rumors that he used albino magic to prosper. He's incensed by both the murders and the accusations. Watu wanaua watu ili waweze kuchukua viungo vyao kwa kuvitumia kwa ajili ya kupata mali. Nijisikia vibaya sana. Kwa sababu na imani kwamba kufanya hivyo si kweli kwamba unaweza kufanikisha ukapata mali. He owns a fleet of more than 200 small fishing boats and he's been on the water for 30 years. He says the industry has fallen on hard times and the use of magic is a misguided attempt to turn fortunes around. Kwa mabadiliko yalipokuja kubadilika, samaki kwa patikani ndio maana watu wakashinda kuendelea. Lakini kwa kweli uvuvi ni mzuri ukiwa na malengo. Ndio kuna umuhimu wa kujifundisha kwa kuhamasisha watu mbinu mpya ya uvuvi kuliko kuwa na mawazo kwamba ukipata ukifanya hivyo ndio unaweza uki down the road in Mwanza, there's yet another albino girl who's been attacked. Babiana and Tindi Mabushi play together behind the safe walls of St. Mary's Residential School. Unlike many victims, Babiana is a survivor. Her sister Tindi was only four years old when Babiana was attacked. <laughs> Bebiana also lost two fingers in the attack. 
Neighbors found the girls and took them to hospital. Hmm? Orphaned only days earlier, Bebiana and Tindy remained in the ward for a year before Shima Quagir, the member of parliament, found them. Hmm? Nimekanao mwezi mzima, nikawarudisha mwanza. Kwa hiyo wanaendelea vizuri. Nilisikia huzuni kwa sababu muda ulikuwa mmepita sana. Hakuna mtu alijitokeza kuwachukua. Nikaona mimi bora nijitokeze niwachukue. Ilikuwa na karibia mwaka. Wanaishi hospitali. Babiana is slowly recovering. Though since the trauma, she barely speaks. James Ole Minruk is one of the girl's primary caretakers at St. Mary's School. <laughs> He says that the girls were paralyzed with fear and couldn't talk when they first arrived, but that they've gradually improved. Na sasa hivi mwalimu yeyote na aunty yeyote anaweza ongea nao na kuagiza kitu fulani ama kuwatuma kitu fulani. Kwa hiyo inakuwa ni kwamba kuna mabadiliko yametokea tofauti na wakati ambapo walipoingia. East Africa's residential schools have become safe havens. Here, the children can play and grow up away from the discrimination and recent violence. It may be that the children are safer living away from home, because in most of the murders, family members have been implicated in the violence. <laughs> Mjombake ndo alichangia bibiana kukata ule mguu na vidole. Mjombake mume wa huyo shangazi. Na amekamatwa yuko ndani. Yaani maeneo yote ukipita unakuta ndugu ndo ameshiriki kwa sababu ule mtandao una pesa nyingi sana. Kwa hiyo ule ndugu anaspewa pesa nyingi. Anaambia kwamba tunakupa hizi pesa, tusaidie hili na ile. Hiyo nakubali. The spate of murders have shocked Tanzania and prompted large public meetings. Earlier this year, Prime Minister Mzanga Pinda urged the courts to act quickly. Kwa hiyo ni dhamira sasa ya serikali kwa kweli wale wote ambao tayari tumekusha wakamata sasa wapelekwe kwenye vyombo vya sheria na tusikie kesi ndani ya muda mfupi mwezi mmoja si mna ushahidi. Watu wasikilize kesi na sema nini tuamuliwe na mahakama yetu. But despite these pronouncements, even Shima Kwagir concedes that the issue has not been taken seriously by the police until now. Haya mambo alipoa yanachukuliwa hayakuwa hayakuwa seriously taken. Kutoka ndo maana nikasema kwamba waziri mkuu na alitulipotembea ameomba jeshi la polisi lijizidishe juhudi zaidi. Walikuwa wanakamatwa lakini kesi zilikuwa zinaenda pole pole sana. Tunaomba kesi kama hiyo ifanywe haraka. Hukumiwe tujue mwoni. Zipo nyingine ndio unataji uchunguzi mrefu, lakini kuna nyingine unamjua kabisa. Mtu anakuto kabisa na mifupa ya albino anayo. Mtu kama huyo. Sitaeri anajulikana ni muwaji. E, ndiyo, maalbino wengi tunashangazi na jambo hilo. Maalbino wengi tunashangazi na jambo hilo. Kwa nini, sirikali, istangaze kwa mba wale, wale wakutu wala maswala ma hayo. Aiza, wamefungu wa fungu cha maisha. Au waiza, wanapeleko wazalani na wana wawa. Bado mpaka ileo tunashangazwa. Sasa tunakuwa na aswasi. Wenda ikawa. Serikali ya Tanzania na viongozi wa Tanzania labda nayo. Inatichukulia labda nayo ya itupendi. Until the murders are stopped, Saidi and his family have to carry a constant burden. Ah, 
In the day, they fear the sun, and at night, they fear the shadows. Mimi nagopia mesha yangu na familia yangu wote ya malbino. Tulaishi kwa shida. Ukichukulia nyumba mba tunawishi, si nyumba ya usalama, ni nyumba mbovu. Haina mageti, haina ulinzu, haina ote. Asa tunawufia mda ote labda, mtu wanza akaja, haka sukumba mlangu, haka ituingilia ndani, haka tukata mkono, ya tunaishi maisha ya kugopa ugopa. Asa tunaishi maisha ya kugopa ugopa.